Hello and welcome to the Podskies Vanderpump Rules Part 3 Reunion Reaction Show. It finally happened. We got to the end of it. And it feels like we're not even... It doesn't feel like the end, especially with the whole like secrets revealed show next week too. Yeah, we might yeah. be back for a fourth episode. I'd be down for that. What <laughs> else is there? I mean, like that at this point, I'm like, it better be like, I don't even know. Maybe more of Raquel's interview at is the there end. Anything in the unseen stuff that's like, oh, or like I don't know. Do you think there yeah. will? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure there's much left else to show except for just more like shots of them just kind of being weird with each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could see that being I'll like, watch it for that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great though. Like a nice like montage compilation of just like stuff like that production's gone back through and been like, oh shoot, like there's one thing. There he grabbed her ass again. There he did this. Like <laughs> Well, we'd like to welcome Taylor and Alan back to the show. Uh, I'm your host, John, and um, Allison is with us as well. Hello. Yay. So Thank we're all here. Us. And uh, yeah, so what were uh, what were you guys' initial reactions to this wild, absolutely wild part three? Well, my first, th- so them in their actual like reunion part of it, I think went about as... I kind of thought it would go, it would go, mm-hmm. but her interview at the end was kind of, it was interesting, at least with like how the timeline went. I kind of thought it'd be something like that, but it was really interesting to kind of see how it all was playing out and you kind of go back and sort of watch how things went and sort of be like, oh, wow, I didn't kind of realize all these things were kind of adding up that way. Yeah. 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 I'm glad that it's over. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> like, yeah. So okay. I felt like I've been a PI for the past, like, <laughs> like however many <laughs> months it's been. Like, I'm so, it just feels so, and like, I think it's nice to have all of our, like, suspicions pretty much confirmed. Like, I mean, we all, I think, you know, knew what we thought we knew, but yeah, nice to hear it from the horse's mouth, you know? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if that's even the saying, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of didn't hear all of it from the horse's mouth that's true yeah 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 we had a coward come in at the end the last five minutes and <laughs> cowardly six day later interview but but what about you guys what was your like reaction i think like, relieved that it's really, over. and and relieved that the bad thing was raquel and sandoval and it involved them i was like so scared that it was going to be someone we loved <laughs> was yeah. going to do something and it was just going to totally come out of left field so I'm a little relieved that it's like okay we can put the cherry on top of this season we hate Raquel and Sandoval and we can move forward <laughs> yeah I thought that it it wasn't I thought there was going to be a little bit more. there was definitely fireworks but I was I'm kind of with you Allison I feel like that you know, I'm glad that it wasn't somebody else. I'm glad that it was just them two, Raquel and Tom together, because I thought for sure something was going to happen between Schwartz and Sandoval. And mm. uh, the only time you saw a crack in Schwartz was whenever Tom made that one comment that we will definitely get to later on. But yeah. that was like the only time you saw a crack in Schwartz the entire thing, other than obviously him popping those pills from part two. But <laughs> yeah there's yeah. I, there definitely is like a a sense of relief that you know it's it's over and it's out there and oh my gosh i'm just kind of i don't know what more secrets can be revealed in this secrets revealed show for next week right maybe they're holding out for something even bigger that they haven't showed us but i don't know what more they could really show us right i think it went on longer i still i still think it was longer than what what she said but i don't think they're we're gonna find that out yeah no one's gonna tell us that i don't think yeah do you think they you know how they like did her six days later after the reunion do you think maybe there's like a secret one that they did with tom that could be on there i don't know because i feel like she called them for that Uh, oh i feel like she asked for that and they it was they reached out to her and then they could have possibly also reached out to right I yep. feel like things went on and she was like, uh-oh, like, 
I need to do some damage control. I'm going to call them up and tell them, you know, I will give you everything you want to know to save face for me. But she said she wanted control of it, probably at least some. Oh, yeah. I feel that she just panicked. She did that out of pure panic because they she couldn't hold yeah, it in that's any what longer. I'm saying. Yeah, it, it was she uh, panicked. She wanted to save herself. I think she watched the reunion or experienced it in real time and saw like I made an awful decision. He's an awful person. And like everyone's going to see it. I need to do something to save myself. Mm hmm. Well, she yeah. kind of, we saw that when they went back into, like, their little, like, back room, like, when she was, like, about to leave. Like, she was even, like, saying, like, how bad, like, she felt and how she felt, like, so terrible. And it kind of seemed like she really had a ton of second thoughts of the yeah. their entire relationship just in that moment. Where it doesn't surprise me that she came back six days later after, like, thinking about it and sort of being like, wow, I probably really fucked this up. Yeah. It's just confusing that she can't see outside of herself ahead of time it's so right. sad like she can cry about not winning a pageant but she has no capability of understanding how her actions could hurt someone right it's hard for me to grasp that she just got it while she was sitting there that's right. the point that i everyone was looking at her and hearing her say i'm really just now seeing my consequences and i was like is anybody gonna say it just now like you did right. the entire time. Well, that's kind of like what she started with, like in the beginning of her, when they when she came in and sat down, and she was like, "Well, that I was so drunk on that Mexico trip that it literally just popped into my head." Well, like she just like does not think in the moment. She has she just has no idea, like no, um, I can't even think of right, the right word, but she just has no concept of like the initial consequences of what she does. It's just right. about like, well, I'll figure it out later. Right. Or like she needs somebody to like tell her what it is like, like mm -hmm. even like going back to like the six, like the six day later interview. It's like that, like you were saying, Allison, it's like that wasn't her <laughs> guilty conscious being like, I need to go get this off my chest. That was a PR person. Like you said, like even if she wasn't the one that maybe realized it at the reunion, maybe she that maybe there was a PR person in that trailer or on the stage that was also watching this being like, oh, we got some damage control to do here and we need to make it right. Like that, it's it's like, it, and, and even then still, it was kind of like, was she coached through that? Like everything, it's not ever an original thought. It's always somebody else being like, this is what you have to do, Raquel. And then she's like, okay, I'll do it. Like, <laughs> you know what that PR person was like backstage watching that? They were probably- Oh my gosh. Like that probably had five since this all started. Yeah. I probably keep crying and running out the door. Yeah. Right. Just like right. Know, the PR person is like that gif of that cat just sitting on the table, <laughs> just pounding away at a <laughs> thing yeah. to, to like fix it. <laughs> yeah. Or like the little dog that's at the table and it's like fire all around it. And it's like, this yeah. is fine. <laughs> like, like... Well, I don't think it helps that I feel like Sandoval is so controlling. He wants to control the narrative. But I feel like they're, her, probably her team is sort of like, no, throw his ass under the bus. Yeah. Throw his ass in the jackpot and go fuck himself. It, right. Like yeah. at this point, just cut your losses. But yeah. he won't let her do that. So now she's stuck and like right. doesn't know what to do. And I feel like that's that's what we're getting on right. the show. I think, that, I think that she'll ultimately stay for a while because she kept saying, like, I don't have anybody else but him. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you think she'll stay? I think she's not going to. She's not going to leave Tom. They're already broken up. Oh, they are. Oh, for sure. I think they are. Mm -hmm. Or she never would have done that interview. Because yeah. if you and I, I don't want to cut to this. Do we want to talk about the interview right now? It's up to you guys. We can do whatever. We can do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, let's go if, for it. If you listen to her in the interview, she says everything in past tense. It's if I would have said something, I would have been betraying him. I would have betrayed him. And it's like, you're saying it right now. You are presently, you have betrayed him. So why are you right about it? And I think that it's because they're already broken up. So there is no betrayal. There, there's no connection anymore. Yeah. So she can say it would have been me betraying him but it's not anymore because they're done yes that's a very good point yeah because i thought that too re-watching it today like the peacock version i was like 
why is she saying this? Because she that, that she's actively betraying him. Like this is obviously going to come out. He's obviously going to see this. So why why is she even adding that caveat in? Because it's it doesn't make sense. But yeah, that's the only way it would make sense is if they were already he's done. Not, and he is that dumb. I I don't that's know. That's true. <laughs> yeah, very good. That dumb, well, and they know. could be broken up now because of that interview. I yeah, it's yeah. hard to tell with her. Yeah. 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 No, I, uh, I just, I don't believe she's remorseful because she's actually sorry for hurting people. I believe she's remorseful because she's realizing that the choice she made was not a good choice for herself. Mm -hmm. Because when she first walked out, she wasn't as sorry. And the longer they sat there and the longer Tom, Tom dug his hole, and she was like, oh, no. Like, and I think the second Lala said, this is going to be you. This is mm-hmm. your future. And she got up to get the water. I feel like that's when she saw, oh, boy, like, mm-hmm. he's not my knight in shining armor. Right. <laughs> You're not going to go run away together and have some amazing relationship. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I think she just realized she screwed up. Right. Right. Well, I think she's so used to other people, like, thinking for her. Then she was so used to, like, I think she was so set that, like, Tom was telling her, like, how this is going to go. And she was like, oh, it's totally going to go this way. <laughs> yeah. And then when it didn't, she was just sort of like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, that's not how, this is <laughs> yeah. not how the world is going to work for me anymore. Yeah. Like, I'm actually going to have to figure things out on my own. And then realizing, oh, I really made a really bad decision here. And yeah. I think that's why she did the interview is sort of like, now I need to, like, figure out what I need to do to make, like, to get out of this and make myself, like, look better. Because I really fucked up here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and the only thing about the interview that really pisses me off, though, too, is, like, what a coward move. Like, six days later, like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, fuck off. At first, I was telling you last night, after we watched it, and I think I mentioned it to you, Allison, too, I was, like, at first, at the very end of the episode, there was an ounce of me that was, like, oh, I feel... I feel a little bit maybe for Raquel like maybe Tom really is just that awful and that manipulative and that whatever uh sociopathic or whatever like he just totally took control of her and led her down this road like but then at the end of it I was like wait a second no like (laughs) no because I'm like she should have had this whole fucking she should have came out there on the reunion stage and looked at him and been like I know what you coached me on but I'm about to go left so get ready for it (laughs) I feel like something happened in between yeah something had to happen in between in those six days where she her attitude shifted a little bit yeah, I don't. I don't want to call her a coward though for not saying that on the reunion because I don't think she even thought of doing that because she didn't think that was a pot. Like she didn't even think that it could have gone left. I didn't think she thought there was a possibility. Was show and was almost like dumbfounded. It wasn't going the way that I she thought it was going to go. Though, when she showed up, yeah. yeah, she's not. I don't think she would do that because it wasn't a thought in her mind. I, I, I think it's both. I, I think I think it's both. I think she didn't think everyone would hate her that much. She didn't think it would go that left. And she also still loved him. So she couldn't mm-hmm. bomb under the yeah. bus. Yeah. Yeah. I also think that whatever, like everything that Tom had coached her on, like what was going to quote unquote work in her favor, like saying the, that Lala was the mistress, like they kept going at her about being the mistress and all that. Like that wasn't mm-hmm. working. And so she just kept getting more and more flustered and it just started sinking right. in more and more and more like as as her sit down went further and further and further into it that it's just like whatever Tom was telling her like was not working. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's kind of a little bit of that played into it, too. I think the reason it doesn't work when she says it is because you you have to say those things with no emotion. You can't right. say them and be crying because if right. you like. He will do that when they were sitting in the dressing room and she was upset about hurting people. He said, I know that really sucks. Like he wasn't a part of it. Right Mm -hmm. there. You did it actually. Pretty huge chunk of all of it. It doesn't. That doesn't suck. Like you suck. You're the problem. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like, and even her being like, I mean, she even says that at the end too. Like, yeah, I have a really bad poker face. Like, <laughs> like, Every like. Time she lies, she's smiling. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Her teeth. 
exactly so, like i don't get why she thought she could actually go out on that stage and like be like oh i'm gonna fool all of them like <laughs> but like that i mean it's like a it's a weird or whatever that that confidence that self there. yeah like they don't they don't think that they're ever going to get caught they don't think that they did anything wrong either of them it's like that that quality that trait that is so toxic that they carry that it's just like wow they really fully thought that they could go out and just carry i mean everybody read through their bullshit but still like the fact that they still just stuck with it <laughs> they commit. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think Tom's is more, he's the narcissist that's sort of like, I'm like, he's sort of like, I can do this narrative exactly where I want him to go and it's going to go that way. And Raquel is just sort of like, well, if Tom says it's going to be this way, that's the way it's going to be. And yeah. had zero thoughts of her own of how it might actually go. And mm-hmm. then when it didn't go that way, he didn't know what to do because he was just floundering out there. We even saw him in episode two where he was just like, I'm fucking glowing this mm-hmm. outside yeah. when he was ripping heaters. Yeah. but then Raquel just she just got there and sort of like oh I don't know what to do now because Tom said it was gonna go this way and now it's not what do I do right right yeah, she even tried to go I, I I just don't understand their their it, it felt like Tom Tom's coaching of Raquel was whatever happens we have the we can just go at Lala and it'll make it all okay uh, yeah, I don't know why they felt like that was the way to go because she instantly yeah. went at Lala for you know cheating on James whenever they first started dating and all that, and then they did it. They just they just kept recycling like oh well, it they took all of their focus and they focused on Lala and they didn't they didn't have anything else past Lala. I think right. Oliver comment. I think that's what they hung their hat on. They thought that because Lala knew about that for a day or a week or whatever that Oliver was still with his wife and she kept it to quote unquote make Raquel look bad right. they thought that would be like oh she did it she's awful mm-hmm. right. and they it just doesn't land it just doesn't matter what no. you do is still worse right. and I, I really think that that's why they went so hard and they thought they were going to have this bomb but they didn't mm-hmm. right and even like that it's like going back to the Oliver thing though it's like Raquel you were still a mistress in that too like like if we're gonna make tally marks of who has how many people and at least what we've seen in the season or just the series as a whole Lala m- maybe quote unquote maybe has one with Randall but like again I don't th- I mean like she tried to explain on the show like I was not a mistress <laughs> exactly yes yeah that too and also like lala said she's like i was not a mistress he told me all the things and i believed him i was not led to believe i was being a mistress like but raquel was being i mean she knew the whole knowingly time. Yeah, knowingly. yeah 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 and even with the whole oliver situation it's like okay yeah did she maybe try to save face on the show and be like no this is done like we're done like but she still also tried kind of took Oliver from Lala so it's still it, yeah you're there, there you're still there you're still doing it right you're right just, have no idea and just the way you even try to like Lala and James can't talk like, like she got up out of her face she's like no 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 I'm supposed to say this now I was coached to say this <laughs> yes yeah you can't, you can't talk like get down <laughs> And what do you, what do you guys think about her not being next to Tom on do you think that um, helped or hindered or well now that you mention it that just like further I think proves that they're not together I feel like I I no 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 the in was it the last episode yeah two? I think so Ariana said they weren't allowed to sit together cuz the first episode when we watched it I said to you cuz you could see a preview of it I was like, I cannot believe that they're not sitting together. They were supposed to sit together. And Ariana, when Schwartz got up to move after Sheena left, Ariana said, no, you will be sitting there. Raquel gets to sit on the end. Oh, okay. She picked the seating chart. Oh. Yeah. She, she's come out like a, a major winner out of all oh, of yeah. us. Like as much hurt and pain as it was for her. And it, it's awful and wish it doesn't happen to anybody ever. But she just like she's really grabbing the brass ring and she's gone all in like that the the Duracell commercial that <laughs> in the chat today was 
absolutely yeah chef's kiss like right right um, and she was just on glamour magazine too and that was like the same people i think that just came out today she was on glamour and they were the same ones that wrote the really shitty article about how tom or not shitty i mean it was great article but mm -hmm. it pissed tom off mm -hmm. because they were calling like oh tom ruined white nail polish for everyone and then like he was uh like going on a baby tantrum about it like on his instagram and like trying to drag this journalist and but yeah no she's like thriving she's absolutely <laughs> she also threw out the first pitch at the uh oh, Padres yeah, game yeah, yeah, like yeah. oh really yeah she threw out the first pitch I think like a week it was only a few days yeah ago, I it wasn't think, it wasn't super long yeah. ago yeah. wow but like she I don't think anybody post like a breakup has ever had such a massive upswing it's I, I it's pretty wild I honestly can't think of a person that's had a you're right I can't think of another person that's had a bigger upswing off of a breakup did Jennifer Aniston, when that happened? With uh, Brad? Brad? Yeah. I don't know. I was in first grade, so. I know. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I saw a, thing, I, it, it's a small tangent here. I saw a thing about Jennifer Aniston uh, the other day. It was it popped up <laughs> on my news feed that was like, she's entered her gray era. And I was like, what? Am I that old now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine Jennifer Aniston ever being gray. But anyways. Yeah, no, I can, I can understand that. <laughs> she always has the rachel <laughs> yeah yes. Yes. <laughs> but yeah speaking of ariana though um i did just want to uh throw out one of her uh famous quotes from this episode which was yes. the go fuck yourself with a fucking cheese grater fuck you you fucking suck you're disgusting and i wish nothing but the worst fucking shit that could ever happen to a person on you gold magical Holy cow what a lie <laughs> i don't think i've ever would have ever in like the wild like, i can't i've said some weird things in like when you're <laughs> needed but saying that i hope you get fucked with a fucking cheese grater is wild it, yeah it's sad i've heard that before like no one said it to me but <laughs> thank goodness heard that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That in high school and i remember being like oh like <laughs> i can't hear something and not take it literally like i'm like, like but yeah. <laughs> Ariana said it. Like I got yeah. joy whenever she said it. Right, right. Like I want that on a t-shirt. Like I, I would wear that shirt. Like, <laughs> like, like I'm just like that is. I think I was like literally aghast. Like when she said it, I was like, oh my god, I have never heard that. But it's my new favorite thing. I'm like now that's gonna be my go-to. Is <laughs> go fuck yourself with a cheese grater. Even better in the peacock version when it was unedited. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so good. You I, acted like you never heard it before. Yeah, it yeah. sounded so much better. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. perfect. I yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it was I iconic. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. crazy. Absolutely crazy. That came that came right after that that quote by Tom saying, "Oh, we only just had sex one time." And everyone's mm. like, oh, it was just one time. What? Like he tried so hard and, and I have no idea. Like he was like one time or a hundred times it's different. And everyone's like, what? Like, yeah. I, and to use his fucking logic, like after rewatching it today. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, Oh, uh, what? <laughs> but he even said that they weren't even thinking logically. And they were yeah. was like, obviously you moron. Like, right. Right. Oh, my, he just, he's so stupid. Like he did he he was definitely right he was blowing it there was no way no way for tom to come out of this looking any better but my god dude like read the room a little bit like right he can't he can't yeah he only thinks about himself it yeah. makes sense to him so he just assumes it's going to make sense to everybody else yeah right that right well i think like he's gotten away with that for so long in the show i feel like there's just been so many other worse people than him that he's been able to kind of like fly underneath the radar and get away with so much stuff or now that he just can't nothing is working for him and just doesn't know what to do anymore right. his stick right. just doesn't work and everyone's calling out for his bullshit and he just is he's out there just floundering yeah throwing everything at it to see what sticks like ariana said like he just there's no oh and he was <laughs> every time i want a, a montage too of every time <laughs> Like he said something either dirty, disgusting, absolutely foul, and like, <laughs> and Ariana's just going like, <laughs> like making like the tongue out, just like, uh, like he's so cringe. Like every time she made those faces or like 
which is like like the one time he made fun of James like oh I'm fucking James Kennedy like and using the British accent and she was like wow what a great accent (laughs) (laughs) how about James uh doing uh Tom's dance that was hilarious that was that was one of the best moments of the show and he got up and started doing Tom's dance because everyone knew it was like exactly his dance yeah yeah yeah. oh my gosh yeah I don't even know like and like how do we feel about like LVP and Raquel like what do we think everything that she said towards her like the whole thing with Schwartz her and Schwartz making out the Halloween costume. I can't even think of what else she throughout went, the episode. She went in way too hard on Raquel compared to how she treated Sandoval. Even in just mm-hmm. this episode alone, she's holding his hand in the dressing room and, and crying, actually crying with him. She cried more with him in the dressing room, I feel like, than she did whenever Ariana showed up at her house a couple days after. Right. And, the, and that day when Ariana was there, she said, Are you getting a little stronger? It's been, what, three days now? But she's holding hands with Sandy and just having tears with him. Yeah, I I don't know. Lisa, what she... She did not do herself any favors in in this whole entire, in all three parts. And that whole... I, I understand her trying to say, like, you need to come out here and you need to say i'm sorry i i totally understand her doing that but she said I, it how many times though but she yeah yeah he right, doesn't get it correct and i think that's why I, I think that's why she just keeps telling him over and over again because she just wants him to just quit lying and quit fighting about it but right. i i think i can i understand why she's doing it but i don't get why she's fighting so hard for somebody that doesn't want to listen exactly well i think it's so one her she has always been more protective of the older cast members versus the new cast members which is why i think she was so willing to throw her underneath the bus would have tom's hand and she also has a business interest with tom in her businesses to try to make him look better so i think she's really trying to help herself and her other business interests with tom. for the men the men cast if she i she's never really stuck up for the like people the women that have been there for a Mm -hmm. long time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she didn't even really she hasn't really had katie's back that much no i don't feel like she has no yeah as far as we've seen on the show there's been no yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and i mean even lala i mean lala's been on there for i mean how many seasons now at this point like yeah she's not an og but even her going in on Lala, like Since what this season? entire episode. Four or what? Even in on yeah. Lala multiple times throughout yes. the parts. Like, yeah. I don't know what was going on between them two, but right. they got some unresolved issues somewhere. Right. Well, and even like Lala and Tom going back and forth about the whole mistress thing. And then LVP decides to end it with just being like, well, don't be a bitter woman, Lala. Like, don't be that person. Like, no. Lala's allowed to be the bitter woman right now. Like she was scorned. She was <laughs> Yeah. She was dragged. And also she's just calling this man out for who he is. Like and I nobody wants it. Knew that she needed to get ahead of it before it, the attack on Tom started. And she knew Lala was probably gonna head the attack. So yeah. she thought if she ended it at the beginning, it would, you know, save it there. But it just made it worse. Right. She pissed Lala off from the get go. And then it was right. okay. There's nothing. Right. To and Lala has no fear going for her. Like, she's like, no, like, I don't, <laughs> I do not accept your opinion. Like, I reject it, actually. <laughs> like, like she said in the last episode, it's like, Lala does not give a shit. Like, she will go in. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It, I, and maybe that's some of it, too, with Tom is like, Tom has always given Lisa such a fierce, strong, like, following towards her like she's tom has never challenged like you know what i mean like maybe there's some of that too of that's why she favors tom because she can kind of manipulate him and make him do her bidding and just kind of be the puppet that she needs in the show or in life and in her businesses and i don't know that's and that's why she doesn't like the women because the women don't fall for that shit like (laughs) tom can be the pushover but not the women like i don't know regardless it's foul she was foul (laughs) like 
I don't even, I don't know, but it was, I uh, yeah, it just kept getting, yeah. I just, I just feel that Lisa just didn't do very well. I, I feel like she didn't do herself any favors, like at all. I feel like she just kept digging herself in a bigger hole throughout yeah. the show. Interesting yeah. that she has like a new restaurant and all that, and a new show apparently too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've... it doesn't look like they have too much out about it yet, but yeah, I'm interested. And in... they should just ship Tom over to Europe and make him live on the street or something, or he can be like the little like like the little butler or something. <laughs> like... Or he could just not be on any show. I mean that too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that would be silent soldiers over there. Do we think everybody's back? <laughs> For the next season no. no really who do you not think uh well i don't think one i don't think tom's gonna be back sandoval you think even with schwartz being there I don't, like what if schwartz was there though i don't know if either of them are gonna be back because mm. one i don't think anybody's gonna want to be with sandoval schwartz is on an island when they went off and did all their stuff <laughs> by themselves schwartz was fully by himself and just kind of like didn't know what to do with himself. I kind of think that if nobody's going to want to film with him, he'll just kind of leave because he doesn't want to be with that awkward situation. I don't I think Raquel stays. <laughs> you think what? I could see the Toms just filming with Lisa. It, honestly, though, you just yeah. go to Villa Rosa all the time and just hang out. And then <laughs> yeah. yeah. you, yeah. you, just, you just got Ken Morgan all the time. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, about Tom Sandoval. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He comes in, that's my favorite. That <laughs> that is my favorite scene of the entire season. It's just I can't believe it, Tom Sandoval. <laughs> it's that one makes me laugh every time. The way they cut to Katie going, "What?" Like it. <laughs> my scene of the year. Oh my gosh. And like, so also going back to the girls trip and kind of like the Lala versus Raquel gist of it, you know, like Raquel tried to claim that Lala resented her because she loved the attention that James gave her. And since Raquel stepped into the picture, that attention wasn't on Lala anymore. And then that's what like, that's what started the whole the whole resentment and like and then Lala had to get that that attention back and then that's why they slept together and she's you not. know she's literally what Lala what even is that said she wasn't sober at the time and that's why that happened yeah like and it's pretty obvious because it hasn't happened since and he has another girlfriend and Lala's single and she's not dying over the loss of attention right <laughs> I right. don't think there's anything there. I mean, Raquel tried, but no. Right, right. Yeah. And, like, the whole thing, like, then Andy's question about being, like, well, or kind of, like, the commentary about the girls' trip and Lala was saying, Raquel was over the news about Lala and James, them sleeping together until it served her narrative of, like, weaponizing it because she, like, do you guys agree with that? Like, do you think she weaponized it because she made that shitty comment about the whole, like, well, thank God you don't have a man. I think he told her to. Yeah. I think he told her. Because he went in on her about that at that party. And I was so caught off guard. I was like, why is he even jumping in? Why is he yelling at Lala for having right. sex with James right now? Who who is he? That's when I think Ariana went outside and was like, "I'm not." Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. So out of nowhere, but now it makes sense. Like he was gonna push that narrative, mm -hmm. made him look better. Right. Mm -hmm. I think exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Also, I like that scene because <laughs> then you know the, everybody gets to screaming and fighting and the all the stuff and James and Tom are going at it and <laughs> James. It was something about his DJing. And Tom was like trying to make a comment or like make fun of him, and James like plugs his ears and was like, "La la." <laughs> yes, that was perfect. Oh, James! <laughs> what a, what a what a catch! What a catch! I don't even. I so I didn't realize also that uh, Tom went uh, to Halloween as Raquel after. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't yeah. remember that at all. That was insanity. Like, yeah, 
quote unquote just started what in August and then like two months later they were like he was her for Halloween and I couldn't right. believe that like I I guess I, I don't know I just thought that that was absolutely insane right yeah and, and, and like LVP seems so taken aback by it and it's like that's what shocks you like not <laughs> he, he seems surprised throughout the whole thing going back to wherever they were talking about um taking accountability and him saying i wasn't doing anything at that time we weren't yeah. fucking it was just one time and it's like it doesn't matter but yeah lvp is so shocked that he doesn't understand why it doesn't matter. right right so, like why are you surprised this is who he is i want to accept it ariana yeah. told you this yeah right mm -hmm. exactly yeah, and I think that ties in, too, to, like, the end scene, like, where she was in his dressing room. Like, that whole thing, watching it today, I was like, oh, like, Lisa, what are you doing? Like, it felt like you, yeah, like, what's the point of this? Like, one, the people that you're hoping will have this magical, like, uh, like, compassion for Tom, they're not going to have that. Like, <laughs> they're not going to magically change their minds. Maybe, like, a few years from now, they're not going to be as angry about it but they're still not going to be like you know what tom we'll give you a second chance let's try this again like i just don't get why she keeps being like well no let's try to like you need to make efforts they need to see your efforts they need to see your remorse like i don't get why why she's trying to make him push him to do this thing or, or to be remorse like things that he doesn't have the capabilities to even do in the first place and why she would think they would all have a come around on him well too. i think that lisa has a different perception of how tom is and how he really is i think that she's built up this perception that he is this really good guy that's really gonna try to like yeah. that he's gonna try to do all the right things and just never got to like realize i think it just kind of started to dawn on her like oh wow he's not the guy that i thought he was but she's got 10 years of this perception of tom that's just being blown up in in front of her. Yeah, it's literally just dropping before her eyes. Right. And I just also feel like she understands what to do and is almost sort of like, you're not this person that they're making out to be and not understanding that what she, her perception of him isn't right. Right. What she's getting now is fully, that's what he is. And she yeah. just, and she can't reconcile the two. It's like she's floundering now. <laughs> right. I think that, I think that's what we're seeing is that she has the this perception of Tom and it's clashing with the reality of who he is. And she can't reconcile the two, and she's trying her best, but she just can't do it because she has a 10-year perception. And maybe, too, then that's why she looks at the rest of the group and kind of points fingers at them. Because, like, almost like she's mad at them. Like, well, no, guys, you're being too hard. Like, give him a break. Like, try to see him the way that I still am, like, mistakenly seeing him. And it's like, oh, no, Lisa, like, you're, you're so deep in it, too, that it's like, how... how you know that's kind of my only maybe that's why she looks at the rest of the group so harshly she doesn't have an issue going in on Schwartz mm. and I was thinking about that earlier today and this might be a conspiracy rabbit hole we can go down another time but the way Sandoval and LVP team up together for each other I really I feel like Sandoval has some something on her I don't know what but something that she doesn't want him to say. There's, I, I feel like there's some reason she goes so hard for him all the time. What? I don't know. I have no. <laughs> I just feel like he has something or knows something that she doesn't want to get out, or there something mm -hmm. went on that this relationship and this supportiveness has to benefit her in some way because she's burning herself on live TV. Like I just don't understand why you would do that. Hmm. Right. Well, I, I don't think that she thinks very highly of Tom Schwartz. So that's why it doesn't go as hard for him. Is because I remember he used to work at he worked at what pump for like a day and then he's like left because it was too much for him. <laughs> so true, like I just think she doesn't have a super high opinion of him anyway. <laughs> so she's just kind of like if he fucks up, she's like, Oh well, that's just who he is. He just yeah. can't like he is yeah, just kind yeah. of like a screw up kind of person. And I just think that's, that's a really good point. And then whenever you kind of compare him to Tom Sandoval, who worked every day at Sir at the bar. And was there even before Ariana? I mean, he was back with Jax, you know, like before yeah. even Ariana came in. So yeah, I, that's a good 
That's a really good point take on it. Yeah. Because yeah, there's like no expectation for Schwartz, but there's expectations for Tom. Oh, right. 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 And, and and kind of goes back to the whole like she has such a high view on him from him 10 years ago like maybe when he was a good worker, worker. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah like he really just liked attention that's why he came to work yeah got right. attention at work so he showed up to work right he right. didn't get attention from Kristen, so he went to the bar and yeah, and then the oh. other thing the other thing too that happened right after the halloween thing that we started this with was um that we got the lightning bolt confirmation with the with the necklace that they like she oh yes like i bought the which we all knew that like that was a thing that was a ru- not really a rumor, but that was a, a bunch of us that were speculating as well that like they did that as a sign and uh, right. And even that, like LVP goes off and it's just like, how could you like being so? I forget she used one t- word for it and I can't remember what that was, well, but she- like, but she was so brazen, like, and then comparing her to the pageants and stuff and like competing with these women and and then james like yeah she doesn't win those (laughs) she's not gonna win this either yeah yeah uh yeah and and like lvp was kind of like going in on raquel and then raquel was like yeah i know i was cringing so hard like well, yeah. I did, I did <laughs> just think it was so wild how brazen they were at times on camera because it was kind of like did you guys really think that you guys weren't going to get caught after we I all really watched did. this I really like, truly it is did. Tom yeah. probably, he had a plan yeah Tom had a plan and he he manipulated and had um and coached Raquel this whole time that this is going to work out we're going to get away with oh, this because he, he has he's that much of an arrogant piece of shit that he just had his ego is so big that there there was no he wasn't going to fail and meanwhile he was failing the entire time right right yeah and what do you guys think too of like the part where like Andy asked I think it was after yeah it was around the time that like Tom and they were Tom was saying yeah we were fucking it was just the one time and then um Raquel was saying like yeah I was considering skipping the reunion and then Andy asked her like why did you do it and she was like I felt a deep connection with Tom felt seen and heard by him and then Ariana just kind of being like well what about me like and then Raquel having the balls to be like well I just never felt compelled to confide in Ariana about personal things and I felt like I could confide in Tom and what does that mean? What? How much more personal can you get other than asking someone, grilling them about their sex life, and yes. then questioning if they're making the right decision about their own sex life? Right. Like you couldn't talk to her about personal things. I I think you could, and I'm pretty sure you right. did. <laughs> meanwhile, exactly. She, meanwhile, she was thinking the whole time that they could be a thruple. Oh. What? Yeah, and Allison brought up a very good point today because I was. So after the episode last night, I said to Alan, like, again, the first initial reactions, you know, like, I was like, wow, like, what an asshole. Tom is such an asshole. Like, he totally, like, maybe this could have worked out. Like, maybe if she, maybe if he wouldn't have just, like, shut her down so quickly, like, maybe, like, if he would have just allowed Raquel to kind of go to Ariana and ask about the whole thruple thing maybe this wouldn't have been such a big deal and like maybe it wouldn't have been that bad <laughs> but then I really liked your point about it <laughs> Allison that like really got me thinking because <laughs> I was like oh yeah no I'm I'm totally wrong on that <laughs> if, she, if if there's there's a one only reason why that's not okay the thruple comments not okay is because that idea popped into her head after she already liked yep. Sandoval after right. she was trying the, the thruple idea was her way of getting out of how she screwed up it wasn't right. because she loves them both so much right those are when you're in love with the couple not when you're in love right. with one of them and are trying to get you know in there with both of them and i just i couldn't believe that she still posted it as a cute cutesy like fun idea it was right. so funny to her right Even now and i was just like you're so tone deaf you're so missing the mark it's right. so disrespectful to Ariana just as a whole, as a person, but then so disrespectful to their relationship. That's 10 years. And you just kind of mm-hmm. joked about joining in like, mm-hmm. 
Oh, it's just so, so bad. And But I, I will say, if it would have happened, if they would have been a throuple, it, he would have gotten kicked out, for sure. Like, they would have <laughs> yes. ended up joining and yeah. being yeah. like, oh, I like you more than him, and I like you more than him, and okay, bye. Like, yeah. they would have yeah. bought him out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just didn't, I wasn't even thinking like, oh yeah, that was for sure. Like she made that comment, like you said, after the affair was already going on. So it's like, no, yeah, you can't no, backtrack no, now. On anymore. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, I think if she would have said, this was my idea from the beginning before we even slept together, did anything together, more excusable then. But like, and then, yeah, I would have been fully, yeah, Tom, like that shitty, you should have at least suggested it or let her have the but no at this point the affair already happened like you're just trying to save face like well i think she did it because she knew that he wasn't gonna break up with ariana it was almost sort of like if you're not gonna break up with her just let me in and just like just so that way we don't have to keep sneaking around because i maybe look i was just getting tired of having to do that was kind of like fuck it just bring me in anyway and she was scared she wouldn't be the choice if he chose yeah that's true she She gave us a choice wow yeah right yeah right. and then maybe they would have tried to push ariana out then like if raquel could have yeah. came in then she could have tried to ice her out enough that she would have either just left or like still something that would have worked out grand scheme of things possibly hopefully in their eyes in their favor you know in tom and raquel's favor right. i think it's all a moot point because tom i think wanted to have a mistress i think he liked the idea of cheating so much so that he didn't even want to bring up the idea that they could even like be open or be a thrupple or whatever whatever it would be because he liked the idea of having like a secret and having a secret mistress and he needed he needed ariana he needed the brand he he could mm-hmm. not lose that brand so there there wouldn't and they were a brand together mm-hmm. you can't leave her and keep the brand you can't pull someone else in and keep the brand i think he needed that part of the I, ariana relationship yeah i think right. you're right on that for sure and what do you guys think about raquel being like that she was still in love with tom and tom being like i'm sorry well, first he did a stupid awkward silence again, like he did when he answered Sheena's question last week. And then it was like, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? he was shaking his head no. He oh, was saying yes, yeah. but he was shaking his head no. And I was like, he doesn't love her at all. Yeah. yeah. He right. just wants her to get what he wanted. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't you think she loves him? I think, I think she did. Uh, yeah. I don't think she does anymore. Yeah. I think she did. Yeah, and I think, she, and it does make me a little sad for her because I'm like, oh, I, I don't think she knows what love is. <laughs> I think it's easy to be manipulated because she has the emotional intelligence of a 16-year-old where Tom could easily go in, just like make her think that she loves him and then could essentially just do whatever he wanted with her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which might be the reason why he did it with Raquel. So That's somebody dumb. so that is the yeah it for sure yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah they're they're it's... disgusting. <laughs> we gotta we gotta talk about the quote, Tom's quote, the oh the t shirt having yeah. with anyone after sleeping with Raquel right right yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and there was some something about the Chicago there was some Chicago girl or something yeah who's mm-hmm. Chicago girl. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that was ever talked about before. I yeah, don't... they just kind of, it kind of seemed like they, it it seemed like there were other rumors they cheated on that they were just sort of like, they probably did. That I think that they just, they weren't bringing up because it wasn't as important. But it kind of seemed like there were other rumors or at least some other ideas that he had been cheating with other people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then it just comes out of like, Andy asking Tom, like, did you, have you had sex with anybody else after with Raquel? And then Ariana was like, well, I mean, after he fucked her, then he came back and he was fucking me too. And then Tom just comes out with that. Yeah. And she kept her t-shirt on and it was really hot. Like his face when he said that, (sighs) I like, oh, I just wanted, I I wanted to break something. Like. I hateful. can't I can't believe that like Ariana like 
didn't spawn out of her body and just like oh. a stake right in his chest. Right. Like Allison put her like hands on her. Literally, I did too. Literally. Literally. And, and thank God for editing too, because they let that silence breathe like no other. Like everybody. And then they start panning to everybody's faces of everyone just being like, oh God, did I really just say that? So that was really interesting because I saw um, a Twitter post earlier in the day where Andy was like, Tom is going to say something that is going to piss off a lot of women. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what, what could he say that? I mean, what couldn't he say? It could be so bad, but like, that was it. And whenever he said it, like I, I had like, my jaw was just wide open catching flies. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. He said that. Yeah. And just the, the hate that was in his heart. What did over you think that. it was going to do? Yeah. Cause it like, that's like not thought it was going to actually benefit him like oh oh she wore her her shirt while they were you know having sex so he's right they really weren't having great int- intimacy and it's like what are you doing <laughs> like i yeah. think that was just him sort of he was so boiled over at that point of just nothing going his way that was him just like lashing out because he was so pissed off nothing was going his way yeah 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 also i was really confused by that comment when it was first said i was like <laughs> yeah, i was <laughs> I was saying, I was like, well, I was like, what t-shirt was she wearing? Was it really hot? Because I was he, he, after we went to commercial break, he's like, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm freaking out. And he's just like, yeah, you were like, I what like was she wearing one of Raquel's shirts or something? And I was like, what are you talking about? No. <laughs> I thought that he was being like gross and way sort of like she was wearing one of Raquel's t-shirts, and that's what made it hot. Yeah. <laughs> He totally um, missed the. I totally, I totally missed. You it. took it literally. You <laughs> actually. Yeah. Missed. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I really, I really like. He just the sarcasm went over. Oh yeah. For that, yeah, sarcastic or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's it didn't. Like, no, it did not make me he's making a real <laughs> shitty comment there. <laughs> like, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll rewatch it later. <laughs> but I, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like, oh, I. I gassed. I was aghast. Again, it just, what, what even? Who? Why? That was the last nail in his that, coffin. For yes. Sure. Honestly, I feel like that has to be one of the most evilest quotes on, in television history. Right. Like, I right. can't think of something that's been said worse on television. Right. In his actions. Leading yeah. up to that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. In the whole context of everything too it's like oh my gosh you're really gonna go there you're really gonna do that that's wild like i don't speechless absolutely speechless even even schwartz was like no dude don't say that like even schwartz was just like uh shit i have to keep sitting here like (laughs) schwartz could have just puffed into dust he probably would have i mean he wanted to like since part one ended and Like that was that was the point where like Schwartz knew that like he has nothing to even come back with for the show. Like there's there's literally nothing for him left here. Yeah, exactly. And and two with the comment, it makes me even more infuriated then whenever LVP is talking to Tom in the like right at the very, very end, going back to that whole little side scene with Tom and Lisa and Tom but like sobbing and doing his old bullshit act of like I just want a conversation with Ariana I just want one more conversation like and 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 I just want her to like like hear me out or some shit and it's like you literally just said what you said on that stage like no woman none of your nobody wants to interact with you you are trash you're actual trash you're the foulest of things ever known to man like what makes you think that and then that's why I get so mad at Lisa then too because I'm just like one I mean obviously we've said it like how can you back this person and then two how can you still go backstage and still even in the very end scenes of like why hope we can all find compassion and like maybe find some grace in our hearts for this person it's like no Lisa no don't Um, put that expectation on any of them that's not fair to them he is awful like and he's not changing I think Mm-mm. that I think that Lisa did that only for the sake of the show because I think that she fears that no one was going to come back to the show if she didn't like put that out there. Mm-hmm. But I think that she's yeah. trying to save the brand a little bit. But yeah. I don't know. I I've already actually seen because in my 
while I was trying to find like graphics to put up for the show and everything, I already saw like the the leak for next season of Who's Back. But oh, really? Yeah. Do you guys want to know what I saw? Oh yeah. It said that uh, Ariana and Katie are back. Oh good. I mean that makes sense. Those are the only two that I saw. So it's not like extremely breaking news, but that was what they they already signed on for next season. Oh well, that's good. I'm yeah, glad to hear I mean that. that makes the most sense. The restaurant's going to be opening. They're going to get a ton of publicity yeah. from that. I that that makes a ton of sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. They only have right. To- right. And <laughs> and not that we have to like harp on this section too much, but like I did find it very funny though too. Whenever they were like going back, <laughs> Raquel and Lala were going back and forth with like the whole name thing of like <laughs> her name. I don't yeah. understand what a nickname is. No. Yeah. And then, then whenever uh, the the other thing that Raquel said to w- the whole Raquel Lala uh, interaction, whenever uh, Lala was like, "You need to seek mental, uh, yeah, need to get mentally evaluated," and she's like, "Oh well, uh, like I am getting men- mentally evaluated." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like her really? weird little smirk. <laughs> she was super proud of that, and everyone was like, "You are so stupid!" Like, yes. Yeah. Yes, I uh, when she's being insulted, she does. Right. It also seemed like she was trying to make like a like almost like well, you guys are dead naming me by calling me Rachel, and almost like well yeah. that's not how that works. You can't just be like well you should call me Raquel and that's how I want you to call me, instead of and instead of how it actually works. Right. Like dead naming is a lot different than using somebody's nickname versus using somebody's. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, her family still calls her Rachel, and oh like God. her. I don't know what a dead name is. It's like if if somebody like um transitions like they go from oh okay like being like maybe I'm Taylor right now but the, Tyler yes yeah that is that's almost yeah that's kind of what she was comparing because I think she said yeah well, it, I, it's like it's disrespectful to call someone outside of their preferred name and it's like that's what have, she meant by that yes I, that's oh, how I took that's it. how I that's, took yeah. that's how I took it. and I was like that's not how that works whatsoever right. uh no. Inappropriate, yeah. like not you no. can't go there, and that's why Lala's like you're such oh a moron. God. Like <laughs> she she picked a fancy pants name, and she wants to go by the fancy pants name. She didn't like transition into a different gender and a different identity. She just wants to be fancy, right? Yeah. right. She's, well, she's, she's so and, dense. Well, I guess in her in her little pea brain, she was thinking, well, I transitioned into this person that you know was going to do stuff for myself all the time. Are the one way yeah no kidding just get outside and and uh, you know and we kind of in that same clip too we got the question of like did you guys spend christmas in st louis together and she says no and then we get the whole scene at the end like it was very fun re-watching it today too to be like oh my gosh like there you're lying there you're lying you're lying there and there you are again <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I like going back and watching it because the, the the commercial breaks make you forget a little bit, but you could just go boom, boom, boom right through. And it the way that this played out, that ending interview was like perfect. Mm-hmm. Like they, the I don't want to, I don't know if Bravo like does this or not. Obviously, it's television. Like some things are, but the way that this whole thing built over three parts to this five minute interview at the end was so incredibly well done. So hats off to Bravo, their great television company and all that. But like the, the way that it was built to that five minute moment was just right. Incredibly done. Right. I was so I got to give hats off to Bravo for that, but in a good uh, way to hook people in to want to rewatch it then. Cause that really did make me be like, Oh, I kind of can't wait to <laughs> <laughs> like, like I mean, you know, we kind of go back through it just to see what the extra scenes are. But then it was like, oh, holy shit! Like, here they are, just blatantly, just a whole list of things that they're just blatantly just out here lying about on the screen, just constantly. And the, yeah, oh, they lied to not only through the season, but to sit down right. and interview, yes. interview beforehand. Mm-hmm. That was six days before, and then the reunion. Yeah, and then, then they were like, oh, we got to tell the truth now. Right, well, her, just her. Well, yeah. she even still lied about stuff because they even like, did you even did you spend Christmas in St. Louis? And in that six days later, it was like, no, no, no. And they showed the picture. And it was December twenty nine, <laughs> so four days after, but still was in St. Louis with Tom. Right. 
So, like, very clearly, like, they're still lying. They're not being completely honest. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, like, semi makes me feel like they're still, there's still something there, but, like, they're still. They're still together. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Because if you're going this far to lie about stuff just to not be together, then why are you lying? I get, I, I don't know. I get what you're saying. Well, and I guess though they kind of bring that up where she was saying like, well, we were waiting because what there was like the one thing where Andy asked like what I think he asked kind of both of them, Raquel and Tom, of just like what's like it going to look like in the future for you guys. And they were like kind of saying uh, Tom's like, oh, I don't know, like feeling things out. And Lisa's like, what? Why are you like saying that? She's sitting right here. And then. And then Raquel was like, no, no, no. Like, he just means something about, like, uh, what was, I, I can't even remember. About seeing if it was just superficial between them or if there was more to it. And LVP was kind of like, no. Like, that came at a great expense for Ariana to just kind of wing it and see what happens. Like, but yeah, I mean, for it to go on for how long and to deceive so many people and for how many months... And then, like you said, for it to be, like, is it worth it? Like, it better be at this point. <laughs> like, well, I think, I, again, I think it just goes back to, I don't think Sandoval ever wanted an actual relationship with Raquel. He just wanted to have a mistress. Yeah. Well, I think Raquel actually did want some sort of relationship. And I think that's where the disconnect is. Is Tom doesn't want one with her. He just wanted to fuck her and have her be his mistress. And that just to feed his ego. He didn't want to have a relationship with her. And he probably had multiple people, too. Because he's touring with his stupid band. So it's like... I absolutely think there's more. it's more than just Raquel. Yeah. Uh, if it if it is a midlife crisis, it is probably more than just Raquel. Yeah. It has to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you don't, do, you don't do something this elaborate. Like, you're... I feel like you can't do something this elaborate, like, just one time. Like, right. it's too... It's too crafted. For it to not have been done and completed multiple times beforehand. Yeah, it does seem like this is not his first rodeo doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, he seems like a seasoned veteran at this. And he, like, legitimately... I, I mean, I guess it goes back to what Jack said, like, two weeks ago. Like, he's been doing this for years and he finally got caught. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. Jack is the most upstanding person of all time, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got some credibility here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, I don't even. Well, I was I wanted to bring up on the Peacock extra. Lisa starts talking about how he needs to cry more, how he needs to show all this emotion. And then, did you guys see how at the end that's what he's doing? He yeah. almost was sort of like, "I'm out of ideas, Lisa. Give me a lifeline. What are we doing here? <laughs> Force him out. <laughs> Force yes. out the tears. Guys, like yes. yeah. Like what are you doing? Yeah. And then what yeah. about his comment at the end of at the very very end of that scene where he's like. I'm not a serial killer, dude. Like, okay, like nobody was saying. <laughs> like, he's comparing. I'm not that bad. Yeah, I'm not that bad. I didn't kill anyone, and it's like, just yeah, stop. yeah, it doesn't matter. Serial cheater. Yeah, uh, yeah. killed anybody, but yeah. And and the one thing too, I think a little bit earlier from that too, that I just wanted to mention was like where Tom was. <laughs> it was after. Raquel walked off stage and they kind of went on their little break and Tom yeah. was like they were kind of going back and forth like and Raquel starts her stupid little fake crying like I'm not that kind of person I don't want to be the person who hurts people mm -hmm. and then Tom's like yeah everyone thinks we're like the most evilest people ever and we're like and like we're compulsive liars and he's like but how do we not lie about this and it's like you yeah you just explained what a, a compulsive liar is a pathological liar maybe more but like still like what do you but mean not you're not <laughs> he just admitted and said how could you not but also isn't a liar yeah right okay. right i'm like you can't th those don't go together no not at all but and only him yeah <laughs> yeah yeah very yeah but yeah that was kind of like other than that i mean yeah. yeah i think also you wanted to talk about mexico mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I, I feel like mexico needs to be talked about i i don't know if it was in the first um 
podcast that we did on this or the second one, but I think I brought up or maybe just Taylor and I talked about it. Um, there is a clip that was actually on the show mm -hmm. where you can almost see Sandoval smacking Raquel's butt. Yes. That during was. the whole like Tom card thing. Yes. The Tom's room card. And the fact that they had sex multiple times in Mexico, I was just like, holy cow. And you were so obvious about it. Yeah. yeah. They like, didn't even, they weren't even hiding it. It's almost like they wanted to get caught. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that they wanted to get caught. I think they got off on it. I yeah. think uh, uh, all really got off on the fact that, you know, we're this close of a friend group and I can hang on her and I can hug her and do all these things and no one's going to think anything. But right. little did you know, I'm actually doing so much more we're, than that. Yeah, that's true. Holy, I didn't think about that. Yeah. So then what goes back to her making out with Tom Schwartz in Mexico? Like, so then how does that all play into this? Like, was... I another way to get more showtime mm -hmm. i really think that that's all it is and I, I don't know if it was a ploy to cover it all up I, I i don't know that it was because if you look at sandoval's mm -hmm. face when they're talking about it he looks pissed he mm -hmm. looks pissed that it ever even happened yeah so yeah i don't know if it's a ploy i i wish that if it was we got the answer because mm -hmm. i really that's one of my like unanswered things that i just really want to know because it doesn't make sense Right. right. It makes me feel bad for Schwartz, sort of like, is he just being used just kind of as he always is by Sandoval, just kind of like throw a backbone. Yeah. Like, what, which what... is what's so sad. It's like you don't have to do these things. You know that, right? Like you can say no. No. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what makes me think that like he's gonna defend Tom no matter what. Like he he just uh, he can't but I don't feel like he defended him he didn't defend the entire him. time. No. On on this one, at it, least. Yeah, and, and that's what makes and, and I just feel that like the whole thing with Schwartz, Raquel and Schwartz was literally I think that they're they're lying and and they're staying firm on that lie that Schwartz everything that Raquel did with Schwartz was just um a ploy to keep people off their scent for hey look over here but what's really happening is actually over here. I totally think that that's I th that seems too well crafted by Sandoval even though Raquel might not have wanted to do it at all. And it was like the alt, like he would, because you can see like Schwartz was super pissed. And it's because like Schwartz, like legitimately thought that he was having feelings for Raquel. No, You don't think no. so? I did you? I didn't mm. think that. I think no. he liked the attention from Raquel, but I don't yeah. think he liked her. I think it's like having another girl's attention. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, and maybe to rub it in Katie's face because I think he yeah. was more oh. spiteful towards Katie that Katie was moved on and moved past him. So I think he more just did it Not to kind of spite her. Until he found out Katie moved on. Yeah. Yes. He didn't okay. really yeah, care. Yeah, yeah, you're right. For you're right. me, though, I had a theory about this a while ago, especially whenever Sandoval was standing in the kitchen and was trying to talk about how he was encouraging Swartz to be with Raquel and I think that in the beginning Sandoval was like I can't do this maybe for a couple days and wanted a way out so his way out was Schwartz I'm gonna push Schwartz to go be with her and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do my relationship thing and that's just gonna work out and then I'm not gonna like her anymore because she's gonna be with my best friend but I think that that couldn't last for long because he his emotions or whatever he wants to call him got the best of him. Mm -hmm. And then for show purposes, they kind of had to keep it up mm -hmm. and follow through with it. it yeah, I, I don't like, know. That's a good theory. I like yeah. that. But it doesn't make sense. It's either that or it was a ploy <laughs> to cover it all up. I, yeah. I still think it's a cover up that, that Schwartz was a cover up and he was the scapegoat for, for a while. I mm -hmm. thought you said he had feelings for it. No, I think that's that was Sandoval's like that was Sandoval's plan. Oh, 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 but Schwartz. But Schwartz, but I think that Schwartz at some point, even though like he did get off on the fact that he was getting back at Katie in some way, I I don't know. I just felt that like he he his feelings were legitimately hurt at some point because he did he didn't think that he was just the 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 ploy. He wasn't yeah. just the scapegoat. I think his feelings get hurt a lot. Yeah. yeah. But he just yeah. He because yeah. just the way that he would, just the way that he would sit in the chair, and and he would every time that he would get uncomfortable, he would start 
messing with his jacket yeah. and wait for him to like move or whatever. And I like every time whenever they started talking about that, he started moving his just uh, moving around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I didn't think about that aspect. Either. I think you just like Schwartz too much. <laughs> I want to like him, but he just didn't do anything. He didn't do any of the right things to like be the person that we all perceive him to be. Yeah. And it's, just, it's so hard as like a, a Schwartz fan for these years that like mm-hmm. he didn't do any of the right things. Yeah. And one thing too, to just kind of go back quickly to like was it a ploy was were they into each other and this kind of did just pop into my head but like what if what if it wasn't as calculated as that but what if it was more from Raquel's perspective of going back to the pageantry and the whole you know the whole how she's competitive with women and she has to come out on top Maybe it wasn't either of the Toms. Maybe it wasn't Tom Sandoval convincing her to do it, to be the red herring. Maybe it wasn't Tom Schwartz kind of being in on it. Maybe it was more of just her and her oblivion that she lives in, that she's just kind of like, okay, well, I got one girl's man, and now I'm going to get a leg up on the other OG, Katie, and take her man and kind of knock her down a peg, and then I'm going to go over here and yell at Lala about James and sleeping with you like you know what i mean like maybe it was kind of more of her in her own friend friend group well yeah i feel like you're totally right because she picked up speed on wanting schwartz as soon as katie told her no right yes okay yeah yeah like maybe it was kind of her way of trying to come out not just like you know their whole game plan of being like out on top at the end of the season but maybe it was her in her own head just kind of being like i'm gonna knock all these women down and i'm gonna do whatever it takes to be the number one woman on top along with my man (laughs) because they both think they're on top like i don't know or just like that or just be manipulative and take what she wants and be competitive about it and it's like a game to her i don't know i don't know it's sad i mean that's disgusting and sad (laughs) (laughs) because <laughs> that's not okay but I uh, the whole thing is just so disgusting and sad yeah i can't yeah. imagine like they this like i can't imagine what andy was thinking like as this all was happening throughout the season like this is our 10th season and this is gonna happen in our 10th season like i'm sure he's seeing dollar signs <laughs> yeah, well, that, <laughs> dollar sign. so stressed at the end yeah. of that I think it's because he has a job to do. He ha- he's his job is to control them and mm-hmm. he put in. Yeah. yeah. And I think that was a lot of where his stress was coming from. And I I think he was very worried that Raquel was gonna just fall apart. Cause you could see him keep being like, please ignore them. Please keep just answering my questions so we can <laughs> Yeah. And how about whenever okay, so like whenever El- or Raquel walked off stage and then or she left and then Lisa was even kind of like wow like that was must have been tough for her like she she tried her hard and and Ariana's just kind of like no she was fine she didn't seem scared at all like like and don't even give her scared. that I wouldn't say she seemed scared no I, and her voice started shaking was the nerves of being trying to keep up with the lies right yeah. exactly oh so bad because exactly. she walked out there proud as can be she exactly oh yeah she, oh she yeah yeah she, she yeah was. i think her voice was shaking because she was this was that was the moment where she was like this is not going well and i don't know i don't know how to go from here but like whatever i had planned is not going to work so what do i do and she didn't know where to go from there it's like the meme with like all the calculations going on in the head and stuff like all the <laughs> like the math it's like she was really trying to think hard just like shit now what do i say like they're calling me out and she doesn't know what to do mm-hmm. but just like a sidebar real fast sidebar did you guys see all the stuff on sandoval's face no you could really see it in the peacock version mm. oh it was like a bunch of white like powder on his forehead Oh. And she, when they walked back in, she was like, I need to get that off your face. Like, there's so much stuff on your face. And she, like, brushed it off for him. 
And then when I watched the Peacock version this morning, like the entire time they're filming while Raquel's out there, it's on his head. I don't know what it is. I, I didn't know. If I you wonder guys if they it. powdered his head because he's probably it sitting there. It doesn't look like that though. It's like a, like, like pieces. Like, hmm. it's Maybe not like it's ash from all of his cigarettes he's been smoking. <laughs> it might. Yeah, it's sticking to all the sweat on his forehead. Yeah, he, really. He probably, holds, he probably holds the cigarette up like at his head. Well, I also, yeah. yeah, he has a possible cocaine problem, and I know sometimes they tuck it in their sleeve, and he mm. constantly is fixing his hair, and so I didn't know if it was something like that, and just the way Raquel seemed very concerned about getting it off his face. Mm. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's probably. I mean, it's a probable cocaine problem. Not a possible one. <laughs> it's a very... yeah, I just don't want to sound accusatory. <laughs> yeah. And some yeah. reckless speculation yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he does kind of seem like he'd do all of the drugs, all not just drugs, a little bit. Probably. Yeah. Definitely. I don't know. And then, uh, yeah. What were you saying? Oh, I was just going to say, what a wild th- three parts of a. I, of a, I like, know. Yeah. It was so incredible. What was your last? What was your well? Uh, the only last thing. I mean, it was like the, literally the last thing was like about the hooking up while she was out of the house at the funeral. Like, and Raquel was trying to sob about it, and it's like, come on, nobody's here for it. Nobody's here for it. You're not sobbing because you're not. It's not genuine. You're not sobbing because you feel bad. You're sobbing because you look bad. <laughs> like, so ashamed of yeah. what happened. I don't think she's, she's not ashamed, ashamed but she feels a sort of shame from it didn't that work now out in her favor right and she's freaking out yes mm-hmm. yeah that, i don't think she's the shame just because of what she did she's ashamed because of the way people have thrown it in her face yes okay that's what i was trying to say thank you for yeah. clarifying that yeah and that's what we saw throughout i mean even like whenever she was out on stage there was no emotion no tears I Nothing. mean, they even tried to bring it up, and, like, I think Lala said it, like, we saw more emotion for her crying over her stupid pageants throughout the season, and then they, like, cut to the flashbacks of her crying at the glamping trip, and her crying another... Yeah, oh, yeah poor Peter. Peter. Oh, yes, with Peter. All about it. He's just like, why is What's this the... happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's literally sitting out there and can't muster up a single tear? Not one. Not a single, even whenever your best, your used to be best friend is sitting across the aisle. Like, I mean, and she was crying at the one point being like, I don't know any two worse people like that would do such a thing. I didn't deserve this. Like you can't muster up a single tear. You you feel zero remorse. You don't have nothing for that. (laughs) That that was shocking. I couldn't. I don't think she believes she did anything wrong. She's upset. That it's not work. It didn't work out for her. Yeah. That's fully one hundred percent what it is. And it's so hard to understand because it's like, I mean, obviously, like we don't live like that. Like, <laughs> I think that's a very select few people that have that mindset. But it's like, how how do people live their lives by that and just are like, you're only ever looking out for yourself. Like that has to be. And then it's like that. I get mad at Tom because I'm like, I think he's been isolating her and like. You know that narcissist. What'd mm-hmm. you say? Advantage yeah, of her right, and her state of mind, and her whatever you want to call it, stupidity or naiveness. I, I don't whatever. Right. I think advantage of it, and that's shitty. Don't right. Me. Right. Yeah. I don't think I, it's very sad to me that she's never going to get it, but I also don't believe that she's somewhere in off in another state getting mentally evaluated. No. I, I, but after that interview she was shipped off because they were like you're unstable you're gonna spill this to anyone and they even said like they didn't tell the castmates what was gonna happen in the surprise because they didn't want it to get leaked they didn't trust her with that right they, they took her phone i'm sure that's probably why she was writing letters sandoval they took her <laughs> right. phone oh right she just a blabber mouth i just feel like she would just at all she just doesn't have enough thoughts going on in her head where if somebody would have come up if somebody would have saw her went up and asked her i think she just would have been like oh yeah this is exactly what i said and that and then that there goes the whole surprise and there yeah. and that ruins how much money of bravos do we think that she's back next season yeah no 
I don't think, think she... I think she won't be back because no one wants to film with her. I think she will be if her parents let her. Oh. I think I I, I agree with Allison on that one. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Because I, I think, like, she is also narcissistic. Like, I think we saw that in this episode. Like, yes, I think Tom's manipulative, but, like, I kind of talked about earlier with the whole, you know, I think it, when it's all said and done, she's still also narcissistic. She still only cares about Raquel. She still only cares about her image and and yeah I think I mean I think she's gonna get a lot of coaching and a lot of whatever she needs to try to help herself look good but yeah I think she's gonna use it as a way to try to repair her image I think I, she'll want to be on the show but she won't get to, I just don't think anybody wants to film with her and there's not like and that's gonna be the thing of why she can't be on it it's not that she doesn't want to it's that nobody else would want to film with her so they can't just film her by herself doing whatever she does I just feel like if Bravo thinks that it'll get them ratings and money, they'll bring someone in. Like they'll bring in Joe or whoever. Or yeah, Oprah. yeah, that's they can somehow pull in. They'll do anything for yeah. ratings. That's a good but point. She, yeah. Especially with something this big, I feel like they 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 see like so so much money that they can't not bring. Every, right. I feel like they can bring everybody back. I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, we kind of teased it with Kristen. I mean, on the other side of things, like I could see them maybe bringing her back. Maybe not a full time cast member, but more of like the friend of a show kind of, yeah. like continual like friend of the show kind of thing. But yeah, yeah. No, I like Al I like your point, Allison. Though she they would just bring somebody on, or I mean, Charlie dumped her too, Raquel. But like, yeah, Joe. I could see it being a Joe Schwartz, Tom and Tom bullshit. <laughs> that, well, if Tom and Raquel like, aren't together, are they even going to want to be? Like, I just, it it's hard for me seeing a pass forward for them because I it would bring a ton of ratings, but how do you, like, it would just be harder to film with some, like, it would cost more money to film extra people yeah. off doing their own thing. And if they go just make the show disjointed. It would be hard if Tom and Raquel aren't together or aren't at least still like hooking up or something like i think that would put a damper in things mm -hmm. but who do you think the group could forgive faster raquel that's a really good question <laughs> oh I, I like that the raquel thing because i think they've never respected her she's just there so i yeah. i think that yeah. they get over it and tolerate her i don't Maybe not forgive, but they'll tolerate her. Yeah. Quicker than she can fall. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. There's so much hate and resentment. I feel like you there, there's hate Raquel. It's about <laughs> hate <people>. Yeah. <laughs> I I hate Raquel and obviously you hate you hate you hate Sandoval now. That I don't think there's any way that oh my. I feel like they're going to use Schwartz as the bridge between both sides. Like they'll let like Schwartz might come back over to the other <laughs> side and he'll be such an outcast, but like he'll be the only bridge between the two sides. Yeah. Because nobody else is going to want to talk to Raquel or anything like that. The only person I can see maybe talking to Raquel again is probably like, I think Sheena might be the one to break. Oh. I think I don't, I don't... I disagree because they had the whole uh, restraining order thing. I think yeah. that burned that bridge to the oh, end. Yeah. And the fact yeah. that it was like impacting her daughter, yeah. that, that, that's exactly. it. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Exactly. I, yeah, I already yeah. forgot. But so I, but I will say, I did agree with you, though, at first, though, John, because Sheena is such the quickest one to always forgive. Like, I mean, in past seasons, like, she has always been, like, the quickest one to just get over it and everybody be okay, let's be friends again. <laughs> like, because I, I don't guess. think she likes the conflict of it, like. Yeah, but I guess that now with with bringing her child into it, I right. feel like that, okay. well, and yeah. she she said that her child like had a panic attack or hyperventilated because she was so upset and watching. Right. Mm -hmm. it, that right. is mm -hmm. where she's done. Right? Do you think? And, yeah. Do you think they bring Stassi back? No, I don't think they can. I don't think no. Stassi would want to be back on the show. No, I think she would. I think she's more happy to be off of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's too grown for it, maybe at this point. I don't know. Unless they did like a mom's spinoff kind of thing, maybe, but I couldn't see her coming back they, for Vanderpump. They could bring in Kristen more, though. Yeah. 
Probably. Yeah. I could see that. I could see that before I could see Stassi. Mm -hmm. What about Jackson Brittany? What do we think of? I don't think so. I feel like that I feel like they're clinging on to this way too hard. Yes. Yeah. It's annoying. Like I do want to hear their opinion, but I it's just kind of like take a break or something. It just right. Wants- it's like the only thing they have going for them. It just shows how desperate yeah. they are for the attention yeah. to be back on the show. Right. That's it. it. It's it reeks of desperation of them to be back on the show. Well, yeah, it's true. Does. It's true. You do love Jack. I for some reason I don't know why I do. He's such a bad person. He always <laughs> tells me you hear what Jack said, and I'm like, no, I don't listen to anything Jack. <laughs> like, why do I like him? He's I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I, I did say to Alan, I listened after he sent that the podcast. I think he was on Sheena's podcast. And, and like, I, I like their interview on that podcast. They seemed a little bit more down the earth than the last time I think that we saw them on the show. And it was a little bit more favorable in my eyes of like, okay, I think there could be a space in my heart to like, I think they're just playing it up. I, yeah i mean that could be yes, yeah yeah <laughs> like like yeah playing to the audience just to get a spot on there and then they're just gonna get on there and be shitty people like they were before. i think they, <laughs> they saw their opening and they're trying their damnedest to get in yeah i could see that i i would though i think because i did say to him i'm like i would be curious to see like jacks in like a as a dad like you know what i mean like it's a different role than what we saw him before what would you say we would be disappointed yeah i don't think it would be yeah. different i think it would be the same just with child next to him yeah 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 <laughs> no. yeah you know what yeah that's true oh my well that was a insane three parts uh we still got the secrets revealed next week so yeah. i feel like we can we can debrief after that one as well if yeah. you guys want yeah oh yeah yeah sounds good That'll be but good. Uh, yeah but thank you taylor and alan both for being on yeah thank you, thank you for having us yep. and uh, that what a what a wild ride this yeah. is this yeah raise your glasses high <laughs> <laughs> this one's for you tonight <laughs> i mean like james yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, make sure you download rate review and subscribe check out uh, parts one and two thank you for all of the watchers uh, on youtube thank you for everyone that's downloaded this um and just uh, make sure you check out everything else that we're doing on the channel and uh thanks to all of you guys and we will see you next time on the podski